The next thing I want to do is establish a tool list. I'm going to pick my tools up front so that they'll be there when I want them. So we're going to go to Tool Pass, and we're going to go down to Tool Manager, and we're going to select our tools. So I'm just using the standard mill, inch, tool library. And I'm going to turn on my filter, and I'm going to go into the filter and tell it that I only want to see flat end mills, spherical end mills, and bullnose end mills. And we'll OK that. And I'm going to start by grabbing a bullnose cutter. And I want a 1 inch bullnose end mill with a 1 16th nose radius. So that will be tool number one. Next, I want to grab a 3 quarter inch flat end mill. Then I'm going to get a half inch bullnose cutter with a 1 16th nose radius a half inch ball end mill, a quarter inch ball end mill, and a quarter inch flat. Now I may not use all of those but I want them to be here in my list in case I need them. So we will OK that. Now let's get started with our first tool path. Now the first thing we have to do is to rough away all the stock around this part. Now to get some basic ideas about this, we're going to go to Analyze, and I'm going to do some distance analyzing. And I want to analyze from the top of this to the top of that surface. And it says that total distance is 1 inch and 50 thousandths. Okay, and I can also measure from that corner down to this corner, and that gives me the full size of the block, it says the block is 8 inches by 8 inches by 1 inch 800 thousandths. And we'll OK that. So that just gives us an idea of how big the stock is. So for our tool paths, we're going to go up to tool paths and we're going to go to surface high speed and we're going to start with the basic core rough tool path. This will ask you for a name for your NC file and the default is to just come up with the name of your drawing, which is Parasolid. So we'll OK that. And it wants us to select our drive surfaces. Well, I want to cut the entire part. So I'm just going to click on the part. And that selects everything on the solid model. And we'll OK that. So it shows us here that we have 52 drive surfaces. Well, the other thing we're going to have to pick is a material boundary because we're roughing off the stock I need to pick my material boundary and I'm gonna pick it from this lower left corner and we'll OK that and we'll OK here and this brings us into the core roughing toolpath parameters so in the tree we're currently on toolpath type the toolpath type is core roughing here we can see our drive surfaces and our material boundary and of course, we can use this to reselect those surfaces or reselect our boundary anytime we want. We're going to go to our tool list and we're going to grab the 1 inch bull nose end mill with the 1 16th nose radius. And we're going to add a comment. And I'll say core rough the part for my comment. Now let's take a look at our cut parameters. So we're not going to get into everything right now. We're just going to give a basic overview of some of these parameters to show you how they work. Now typically with some tool paths, especially the high speed tool paths, you might set this, your step down, to be a long length of cut and then set your step over to be a shallow width of cut. In other words, if my total distance was 1 inch and 50 thousandths, I might make that 1 inch and 50 thousandths since I have a 1 inch end mill. That way I'm cutting with the full length of the tool. But then I would change my step over to be somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. I would just make it 15 this time. Now it doesn't take an exact 15 percent step over. 
15% will be the maximum step over. And then there's a minimum value. So it's going to step over at some distance between these two. Here we have stock to leave on the walls and the floor. And I'm going to make that 30 thousandths. And it will automatically make the floor the same value as the walls. Now, because of the way I've set my step down, some of these won't matter, like transitions. This is how to step down between multiple levels of cuts. We're really just going to do one level of cut. Our linking parameters control how the tool is going to retract when it has to move to different areas. And here, we have the clearance plane that we want it to retract to. Now, the default here is 2 inches, which is nice and safe, but I'm going to set it to 100 thousandths. I only want it to go to 100 thousandths above the top of the part. And whenever it has to retract, I want it to do a full retract. Here we have lead in, entry, and exit values. So when it has to come in to do a contour, it's going to lead in vertically and then sweep in on an arc. And these are the values for the lead in length and the arc value. One last thing I'm going to take a look at is my planes. If I go to planes, it should have the name of the plane that you defined. Mine was called Top Machining Plane. So my work coordinate system, tool plane, and construction plane should all say Top Machining Plane. And we're going to OK this and let it generate that toolpath. I'm going to take a look at this in a front view. And I want you to notice that it didn't go all the way down. Now we could see it took this in one depth cut, but it didn't go all the way to the full depth. And that has something to do with the tapered walls and some of the curvature of this part. So what we can do to get around that is to go back to our cut parameters and alter some of this. We can tell it to add additional cuts, but that's not going to do anything because it can't add additional cuts going down because we're only taking one step down. So I'm going to change this to 400,000 step down, and I'm going to change this to a 60% step over, which is a more traditional type of roughing routine. Now when I say add cuts, if it finds an area that's curved, like if there's a radius or if there's some kind of a steep taper, it will feather in additional cuts with a minimum step down of 40 thousandths. But it's only going to do that if it can meet the maximum profile step over. So in other words, the taper or the radius has to be big enough to fit. And one thing about this maximum profile step over is this can be no smaller than the step down. So I'm going to make this 0.4. Now we're going to OK this and regenerate that toolpath. Now I'm going to right click, go back to a front view, and we can see that it has actually cut all the way down except for the stock that we told it to leave on the floor. So it did 400, 400, and then whatever was left, leaving the stock on the floor, and because the distance between step overs isn't very big, it's not feathering in any additional cuts on these curves. But that's okay. We're going to get a nice toolpath out of this. At this point, you should probably select that and take a look at this in Verify. Now, of course, in Verify, you can just let it play. You can control the speed. Or you can just grab your slider and move it all the way to the end and see what it's going to look like. And there we can see the three steps going down and how it's accommodating that taper and the radius on the top of the part. So far, that toolpath looks pretty good.